Welcome to our fourth Friday from the Archives presentation. I'm Penny Clef, Education Specialist here at the Georgia Archives. Today, you will enjoy the Georgia Archives, a brief overview and update by State Archivist and Assistant Vice Chancellor of the University System of Georgia, Christopher Davidson. Christopher has worked in the archives field for over 27 years, including with the Alabama Department of Archives and History and the Alabama Department of Transportation. He has been State Archivist of Georgia for over nine years. He received his BA in History and MLA with a focus on Southern Literature and History from Auburn University Montgomery and his JD from Thomas Good Jones School of Law. Now, if you have friends or family who are unable to view this webinar, they still can enjoy this presentation as it will be uploaded to the Georgia Archives YouTube channel. Welcome our State Archivist, Christopher Davidson. Thank you, Penny. And thanks to each of you for joining us today. I'm going to give you a brief background of the archives and then talk about the past 11 months. After that, I will answer questions. Feel free to submit questions throughout and I'll try to get to them at the end. The work we do at the Georgia Archives is important. We are stewards of the records of the state of Georgia and as such, we strive to preserve the history and rights of the people of Georgia. An archives is a collection of historical records that document a place, institution, or group of people. It is also the place where archives are stored. The Georgia Archives is the official repository of permanent records of the state of Georgia. We preserve the past and promote lifelong success. By identifying, acquiring, and managing, preserving, providing access to, and publicizing archival records, and assisting state and local agencies with records management. This is what we do. The Georgia Archives was established in 1918 after a prolonged effort on the part of the Archives' first director, Lucian Lamar Knight. The Archives occupied a balcony in the State Capitol building for 12 years until 1930 when furniture magnate Amos G. Rhodes left his home, Rhodes Hall, to the state. Knight's successor, Ruth Blair, facilitated the move of the archives to the mansion on Peachtree Street. Under direction of Blair's successor, Carol Hart, in 1965, the archives dedicated its first home built specifically to house archival collections. The 14-story marble-clad building was held as the most modern archival facility in the country. The new home led to the expansion of services, including the addition of records management and microfilming for state agencies and local governments. Here, Hart's successor, Edwin Weldon, continued the work of the archives. In 1998, engineers determined that the downtown building was sinking due to groundwater and nearby interstate construction. In April 2001, the Georgia General Assembly endorsed a public-private partnership to construct a new archival facility in Morrow, adjacent to the Southeast Regional Branch of the National Archives. Groundbreaking, with Weldon's successor, David Carmichael as director, took place on October 30 of that year, and the archives opened its new building on May 6, 2003. Since that time, the facility has been awarded design awards by the American Institute of Architects at the state, regional, and national levels. We're located in Morrow at 5800 Jonesboro Road, right in front of Clayton State University. Make sure to check our website before you visit at georgiaarchives.org for current hours. Since 2013, the Georgia Archives has been a unit of the system office of the University System of Georgia, which is under the Board of Regents. We report through me to Dr. Tristan Denley, Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs and Chief Academic Officer. The Archives budget for fiscal year 22, not including the Record Center, is under four and a half million dollars per year. Over half of that is dedicated to the rent of the archives facility. 70% of the archives budget is dedicated to the facility through rent 
facility, staff, and operations activities. That leaves us less than 1.3 million for actual archives activities. When we have taken budget cuts, including the most recent, staff levels are reduced. Here you can see the staff levels at various times from a high of 90 in 1982 down to 10 in 2012 and 21.75 now. These staff are organized into eight sections as detailed on this next screen. Here you can see we have education outreach, which is one penny, one person who is penny, who you uh, saw momentarily a, a few minutes ago. Collections management, which is 3.75 full-time equivalent. Reference has two staff members. Preservation also has two staff members, as does reformatting. Records management, which includes the record center, has five employees. Of those five, three are the actual staff of the record center. The facilities is three staff members, and the administration, which includes myself, and the deputy state archivist is three people. Over the last 12 months, much activity has taken place at the Georgia Archives. In the face of COVID and budget cuts, this year we are able to expand programming, continue to increase interaction with you, and improve the efficiency of our operations. As far as what we did this year specifically, let us first look at outreach. We continued our lunch and learn lectures. There's one each month. Uh, including a history of Christmas traditions, which is uh, later this month, next, next Friday. The First World War, Why It Still Matters, Georgia's Land Lotteries and Native Americans, Georgia Politics, the Memory Lab at Mental Georgia Regional Library, All Americans of 82nd Airborne Division and Operation Husky, D-Day Plus Six Days, Donald Hollowell, Foot Soldier of Equal Justice, Atlanta from Below, exploring the history of underground and the railroad go gulch. Fox Theater, Institute programs in Georgia historic theaters. Colonial Georgia, Oglethorpe years, and Atlanta's healthcare history. In addition to our yearly events, we added Fourth Friday from the Archives, of which today's lecture is the last of the year. The six new Fourth Friday from the Archives programs occur every other month from noon to one and feature an employee of the Archives presenting on a topic in their area of expertise. The schedule here only provides the general topic that will be presented for each program. The six annual special events have been continued this year as well. The schedule you see here will continue each year uh, pretty much in that same state. Sorry, there's a slide that I uh, accidentally deleted. Um, but if you look at our website, you will see a more specific uh, schedule of the uh, events, the fourth Fridays from the uh, archives, as well as our six other uh, special programs. Um, but you can look at our website to see the specifics, uh, and soon we'll have the specifics for uh, 2022. Most of our programs are available for streaming on our YouTube channel. As we've moved our programs virtually, we've been ple pleasantly surprised by the number of views. Whereas our in-person attendees for programs average around 1,100 people per year, our programs on YouTube are expected to get close to 5,000 views this year. That's over a 450% increase. We also publish two issues of our newsletter from the vaults which is coordinated by our education section. The newsletter features articles by our staff and highlights their work. To receive the newsletter, you can provide Penny with your email address or look for it on our website, where we also have older uh, copies. We only had a handful of tours this year. If you'd like a tour of this building, please contact Penny to schedule one until we get our regu regularly scheduled tours back up and running. As part of our holiday open house later this month, we'll have a video tour of the archives to give you a glimpse of our building and what you might experience on an in-person tour. 
The GRAC Awards were held virtually again this year in October. Dr. Denley joined me, Dr. Toby Graham, Chair of the Georgia Historical Records Advisory Council, and the entire GRAC Board to recognize the GRAC Award winners during the 19th Annual Awards Ceremony. The GRAC Awards recognize outstanding effort in archives and records work in Georgia. GRAC works to promote the educational use of Georgia's documentary heritage and to support efforts to improve the condition of records statewide. The board is charged with the advising the Chancellor and the Georgia Archives on records and policy issues. Nominations for the 2022 awards will be accepted beginning February 1st, and they must be postmarked by June 1st, 2022. More information is available from the Georgia Archives website. GRAC also works with the National Historic Records Publication, NHPRC, National Historic Records Publications Commission, to issue grants to local governments throughout the state. For more information on the GRAC uh, grant program, please also see our website. The number of researchers at the archives is still down this year. Staff have been able to make great strides in implementing new software, including Alma, Aon, and DSpace. There are videos on, sorry, not DSpace, archive space. There are videos on YouTube covering some of the updates, and we hope to soon roll out some additional videos that will help viewers to better, better utilize our software to find records. The new software will also help us to better track statistics to make more informed decisions regarding priorities. We've recently added a new reference archivist, John Whitehurst, and promoted to make us strong. Collection activities included the completion of the first complete inventory of the collection since we moved to the building in 2003. This inventory helped us to locate records that have been shelved in the wrong place, improve our finding aids, and identify records that needed reboxing. We received many new collections and additions to existing collections, such as the Department of Community Affairs Downtown Development Design Assistance Materials 1980 to 2018, which include plans, drawings, photographs, and slides of various downtown developments. Other important collections that came in include House and Senate bills and resolutions, House journals, Senate journals, House committee minutes, Senate committee minutes, which were all from the 2019-2020 session, and 2018 election returns from Secretary of State's office. Please note, we have not received the 2020 election returns as yet. Some select collections that received additional processing by staff this year include Surveyor General, Fractional, Fraud, and Reverted Lots, Fraudulent Land Lottery Draws Records, Stone Mountain Memorial Association Subject Files, County Map Files, and various records of the Governor, Education Department, Defense, Public Health, Environmental Protection Division, Supreme Court, and several county series. Many of these include minor rehousing, photo replacement, or correct finding aids as issues come up when patrons request certain records. Our reformatting section is responsible for scanning and publishing those images on the website in the section known as the Virtual Vault. Most of their work is funded by grants from the R.J. Taylor Foundation. This work fits the requirements of the grant and focuses on early records of the state with genealogical value. County maps prior to 1910, pre-1910 records from Crawford and Hancock counties, county records on microfilms such as Jackson County wills and appraisements of the states, 1796 to 1814, Richmond County deeds, 1783 to 1791. Richmond County inventories and appraisements, 1799 to 1829. And Columbia County Superior Court minutes, 1804 to 1808. The purpose of the R.J. Taylor Foundation Trust is to promote genealogical research and study in Georgia in conjunction with the Georgia Genealogical Society and the Georgia Archives. Foundation provides grants to individuals and organizations to defray publishing costs of genealogically significant Georgia records 
from public and private sources. The primary emphasis is on preserving and making available to the public genealogical data concerning those who lived in Georgia prior to 1851. Those interested in the work of the Taylor Foundation can get to its website from the Partners tab on the Georgia Archives website. The goal of our preservation program is to ensure that our records will be appropriately preserved so they will be available for use. Preservation staff work closely with the facility supervisor to ensure the collections are stored at appropriate temperature and humidity and are free from pests and mold. They also prepare records for display in our exhibits and for scanning and perform conservation and repair as needed and as appropriate. Periodically, they also provide training and workshops. During this year, staff participated in a podcast for Chatham County Emergency Management Agency and also completed the survey of our microfilm collection. Preservation staff continue to offer a series of four preservation workshops and are preparing for a new series next year. These workshops for anyone who works in cultural heritage institutions, libraries, museums, galleries, or just has an interest in learning how to best look after their own items. As you see here is a list of the workshops we offered this year, which were well attended. Similar workshops will be offered again in 2022. Here's the tentative schedule for 2022. The workshops range from beginner to intermediate. However, prior conservation experience is not required. Join us for as many or as few as, sorry, join us for as few as one or as many as all four workshops to gain a greater understanding of paper and paintings for conservation, preservation, and how to best look after your treasures. Registration fees include all materials and snacks will be provided. A discounted price is available, available for registering for all four workshops. The conservation section also hosted two pre-graduate interns again this year. This program is very important in helping the intern to get accepted to a graduate program in conservation and helps us with conservation projects in the lab. This year, the internship lasted 12 weeks and the interns gave us a summary presentation upon completion. The internship is a yearly program generously funded by the Friends of Georgia Archives and History. The Friends support the mission of the Georgia Archives by funding conservation and educational programs, and by advocating for the value of the Georgia Archives and archives in general to enhance public awareness of the treasures to be found at the archives. The Friends strive to bring life to the documents and artifacts through programs that focus on those who created them, the significance of their creation, and the impact they had on the lives of ancestors and modern day citizens. The Friends raise funds through membership and the sale of a yearly Christmas ornament related to the State Capitol building. The 2021 ornament is on sale now and features the E. Howard Astronomical Regulator Clock that currently stands inside the Governor's office. This beautiful tall case clock was one of the very best timekeepers available at the time. It has been part of the financial and industrial development that the expansion of the railroads brought to Georgia's economic history. It was returned to the state and stood guard outside the governor's office for many years. It amazingly keeps time within one second a month over 100 years after it was made. Records management is the efficient and systematic control of the creation, receipt, maintenance, use, and disposition of records, including processes for capturing and maintaining evidence and information about business activities and transactions in the form of records. Basically, it's managing your records properly through their life cycle, from creation to disposition. Our records management section helps state and local agencies manage their records including through the operation of the Record Center, where we store records for a fee. This year, the Record Center had over 60 customers and maintained almost 160,000 boxes of records for state and local agencies. Records Management Section also worked with 10 state agencies to present schedules that were approved by the State Records Commission. Here you see some of the shelving and contents of the State Records Center. We currently have an opening for a warehouse worker. Please contact me if you know someone who would be interested and I can provide additional information. 
This year, the Georgia Archives was awarded two grants. The Clayton County Tourism Authority awarded the Georgia Archives a grant for $12,700. This grant proposes to work with Georgia Public Broadcasting to market the archives and several specific educational programs. Marketing includes messages on Georgia's 19 station NPR network that covers the entire state and surrounding areas, including Chattanooga, Tallahassee, and Jacksonville, reaching over 350,000 unique listeners each week. Also included in the marketing campaign would be ads on gpb.org, which is over 1 million monthly streaming session, and GPB's newsletter magazine, which reaches over 80,000 people. It is expected that the marketing campaign will help to increase participation and education opportunities for the public from outside Clayton County by reaching over 3.38 million people. Here you see me and Penny at the meeting of the Clayton County Tourism Authority. We were presented the award by Clayton County Tourism Authority board members and its executive director, Tamara Patridge. The Georgia Archives was also awarded a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. This grant is under the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. The award, which may be as much as $122,000, will be used to provide research and presentation on Georgia's response to desegregation. Beginning early in 2022, staff will begin researching in identified collections to identify documents regarding Georgia's reaction to desegregation, 1954 to 1965. These collections include over 2,500 cubic feet of records of the Georgia Department of Education, Georgia Legislature, Georgia Secretary of State, University of Georgia, the Governor's Office, Metropolitan Atlanta Transit Authority, the University System of Georgia, State Literature Commission, the, Eugene, the Edward Eugene Cox Collection, and the J.D. Rowlett Collection. In the summer, Penny will begin delivering classes for in-person and remote learning opportunities. After the end of the course, Tamika Strong will give a public presentation summarizing the content covered by the class. Staff will create and install an exhibit related to the course and, and the presentation. Tours of the exhibit will be conducted by Penny and Tamika Strong. In November, I will give a presentation summarizing the work of the grant and the assistance provided by NEH. This is an exciting opportunity for us, and I hope, hope you, and I hope for all of you. I also neglected to mention that we uh, also have grant funds through the University of Georgia from, from NHPRC as, as part of uh, UGA and, and GRAC's work with the uh, grant program. A little over a year ago, we began working with the USG Foundation. In that time, we have raised almost $3,000 through the foundation. These funds will eventually be used to improve our tour hallway on the second floor of the building. Thank you all. Thank you to all of you who have donated. If any of you would like to donate, please go to our website, georgiaarchives.org, and click the red Give button at the bottom right where it says give, support the archives. You may, when you first get to the page, you may have to scroll down just a little to see the button. Once you click on that button, it'll take you to a new screen where you click designate your gift, which is the button on the right. Once you do that, uh, more options will appear. Click on the drop down arrow at the bottom in the red box where it says give to a USG foundation designation. Once you click on that drop down, more choices will appear. And then go down to where it says USG initiatives and click on that button. That'll uh, go to a different screen or actually it'll stay on the screen and give you more choices uh, at the bottom and those squares. And the one on the left is Georgia Archives. Click on that. You'll get this screen where you can select your donation amount or enter a custom amount. Uh, choose if you want that to be a one-time donation or a monthly donation. You can also click to dedicate the gift. Uh, it suggests donating with Google Pay, which is in large, 
But if you go at the very bottom under that, in small letters is, or choose another payment method. So there are these other payment methods available. You just need to click on that to go to the next screen. I know this is a lot of clicks and I hope we can work with the foundation to make the button on our website go straight to this screen. Thank you again to everyone who has donated to us through the foundation or through other means. I'd also like to thank the organizations that help us each year. Here you see the name of the organization and the website and I encourage you to, to visit the, these websites and either offer them your support or take advantage of the offerings that they have. The R.J. Taylor Jr. Foundation, the Friends of Georgia Archives and History, Georgia Genealogical Society, Georgia Archives Institute, Georgia Historical Records Advisory Council, National Archives at Atlanta, National Endowment for the Humanities, National Historical Publications and Records Commission, University System of Georgia, University of Georgia, Daughters of the American Revolution, the National Society Sons and Daughters of the Pilgrims, the National Society United States Daughters of 1812, the Afro-American Historical and Genealogical Society, the National Society of the Colonial Dames of America, Clayton County Tourism Authority Board, and anyone else that I may have uh, neglected to list here. Thank you for your support. Um, and I encourage all of you if you have interest in this, there's other ways to help besides just donating money. These organizations uh, are happy to have volunteers to help them either spread the word about the activities that they do or to actually help them do their activities. Uh, many of these uh, groups are looking for members. They're also looking for board members. So get, get out there and, and join one of these groups and see how you can help. Another source of funds for the archives is through fees. Our largest source of fees is income is through facility rental to film productions. As restrictions across the state lifted, filming at the archives resumed after no filming in 2020. Here you can see the number of productions who have leased space at the archives building from 2016 to now, as well as how much we brought in from those rentals in each year. We work with the University System of Georgia properties office in the system office to obtain contracts with these production companies. Staff then help monitor the filming to protect the records in the building. These funds help to supplement our maintenance costs for the building. Overall, it has been a good year for us here at the Georgia Archives. I'm proud of our, I am proud of and impressed by our staff's continued work through the challenges of the pandemic and budget cuts. We continue to provide excellent service to all who interact with us. I always say the most important and lasting thing I do here is to hire the correct candidate. Thank you to all our staff for what you do. They are professional and dedicated. Many of them go above and beyond the call of duty and they do not always get the recognition that they deserve. I look forward to all of you, sorry. I look forward to the coming year and all its new opportunities. I uh, appreciate you all joining us today and I look forward to answering your questions, which I'll start doing now. Um, how has COVID affected the Georgia Archives? Um, throughout the uh, pandemic, we've uh, tried to stay open to the public as much as possible uh, within the safety guidelines uh, provided to us from the university system central office which are based on the guidelines of the governor and the CDC. So we had, for a time, um, greatly limited the services we were providing. We, uh, for one, moved all of our presentations from being in person to virtual. Some of them we had to cancel at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, now we're trying to offer all of them. They just maybe uh, offered virtually instead of in person. We limited the use of the building by outside groups and have slowly started to release those to, to relax those restrictions so that uh, small groups can uh, start reserving rooms um, working through some of our restrictions uh, we've increased the amount of cleaning of the building uh, sanitizing um, 
we changed our hours. Currently, our hours are from 9 to 12 in the morning and 1 to 4 in the afternoon. So we're pausing for a break in the lunch so that staff can uh, have their lunch and give our cleaning staff time to, to reset the uh, building for the afternoon. Uh, there was a time we were discouraging people from coming in in person unless they had no other choice uh, to get the records. And then we would really work with them to try and get them to do as much of the research and preparation before they came to the archive so that we could have the re records ready for them. Uh, we tried to do as much as we could over the phone. Uh, the Georgia Archives in general encourages people to come here to do the research. We don't provide distance research uh, through email or phone. Uh, during the pandemic, our staff have done a wonderful job of trying to help people as much as they could over the phone and through uh, the Ask an Archivist system so that very minor questions our staff could, could answer uh, remotely without having the, the public come into the building. And I'm, I'm very pleased with how that's worked and look forward to the pandemic in, ending and, and people returning to normal and we get more people into the building. Andrew Bramlett said thank you for the presentation. Um, what is the difference between the archives and the records center? That's a very good question. Uh, the people that we work with in government uh, many times don't understand the difference. The permanent records of the state come to the archives and when they come here they become the property of the archives. We're at that point responsible for their continued maintenance and providing access to them. Records that go to the record center are temporary records that will eventually be destroyed. Anything at the record center the archives does not own. Uh, those still belong to the state or local agency that sent them to us. Uh, when it's time for those records to be destroyed, we have to get the permission of the agency before we can destroy them. Uh, the, service of the services of the archives, other than a few very specific uh, conservation services and copy services are, are free. There's fees for those uh, conservation and copy services. Uh, but everything else we pretty much do at the archives is free. Almost everything at the record center is done for a fee. Uh, state agencies and local governments that are our customers, they have to pay fees to store the records there, uh, for us to provide access to the records, and um, for us to uh, pull the records for them. Um, so if you want to see a record that happens to be at the record center, you have to go to that state agency and see it at the state agency and that state agency would our local government would pull it from the record center ask us to pull it and we would deliver it to that agency for you to look at anything at the archives uh, we pull ourselves because we own it it's a very good question um if we have questions about preserving our documents can we contact the conservation staff I would encourage you to first look at our YouTube channel and our website and see if there's a presentation that maybe addresses uh, your question. Uh, Sigourney and Tracy, our preservation staff, have done some presentations that are captured on, uh, captured and are available on YouTube. And also look at our website to see if there's information. After that, yes, uh, con you may contact them. Uh, just call the, the front desk. Um, the, the main number and, and ask to speak with someone in conservation and then they can tell you whether they can help you or not. Uh, but we do periodically have uh, a program of some sort where they'll talk about how to preserve your paper records, what's different about photographs, uh, how they need to be stored. Um, and then these are the type of programs that we will uh, be doing again in, in the future. As, as you saw on the brochure, uh, the slide with the brochure, uh, preservation staff give a talk each year. Well, we don't have any other questions right now. No more questions right now. Um, I mentioned the Georgia Archives Institute is one of the institutions I thanked. Uh, for those of you who are interested in a career in archives or maybe you just have some archives and records management responsibilities in your job or you're just curious 
the Georgia Archives Institute offers two week uh, training uh, for a fee. Uh, that training is hosted here at our building. Uh, the Georgia Archives Institute coordinates that, hires the uh, teacher of the, that program, brings in a special guest. Uh, it also has an internship component. Uh, so for those of you who are interested in learning more in the field of archives, it's a very good opportunity. And so I would suggest that you check that out. There are scholarships uh, available for that as well. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, Penny, stick around. Penny's going to come and talk to you for a few minutes about some upcoming events. But um, I very much enjoyed getting to speak with you all. Hopefully when I uh, speak with you all again next uh, November, I'll uh, to have some of you in, in person. Hopefully we'll be farther along in, in COVID and, and we can have uh, at least in, in person in, in part in, in addition to virtual uh, as, as we all kind of adjust to the new world. But uh, in the meantime, I hope to see you here doing research uh, or attending uh, other events here at the archives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris, for that really informative overview. What you're going to want to do, if you want to find out more about the archives, or you, you weren't sure what was on a slide, you want to find out about joining FOGA, um, this is going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So look for that. Uh, you can always subscribe. It is totally free. Um, speaking of events, our upcoming event on December the 10th, starting at noon, our lunch and lunch student historian Andrew Bramlett will present a history of Christmas traditions. Now we all know Santa, Christmas trees and Rudolph, but do you know where they came from? Many classic Christmas traditions have fascinating origins from Norse legends to marketing gimmicks. This unique presentation covers these interesting stories along with other Christmas traditions from the past. You can find the link to this webinar on our website, www.georgiaarchives.org, under our Lunch and Learn series. And once again, thank you so much for joining us.